Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, it's Bucky here, joined by... What up guys, it's David here again, and I'm sleepy. Oh yes, he's sleepy, that means he's going to be very short and very grumpy. I'm always short, I'm only 5'7", remember. <laughs> That's very true. Um, what are actually... we going to... No, I messed it, what are we... I can't do it, can't do it without just like one word. Huh? What are you trying to do? Buff, geek, buff, geek, buff, geek, buff, geek, buff, geek, buff, but... I was going to try and ask a question in the theme tune. I can't. It's really tricky. What are we going to do today? No, oh, that is really difficult, ah, isn't it? Yes, isn't it? What are we going to talk about? To... Oh, wow. That's really it difficult. It would have been really cool if I'd nailed that. Yeah, it would have been. It would have been really good. Okay, so you probably guess from the theme tune that we just uh, a cappella there. And also probably the, the description of the podcast before you started listening to it. Oh, yeah, because... Well, because you can read. But sometimes people just, it, it just plays on, you know what yeah, I mean? So it true. could just be playing on right now. Thanks for listening. Yeah. So this is going to be our review of the first episode from Season 7's Game of Thrones. Yay! Which will be now replacing the MCU movie review series. Because running, we've yes. concu- running concurrently for, weekly for, for seven weeks. or eight weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, because we, uh, cause we, we've, we've just done it. We've just we've talked just about finished. Spider-Man. And as much as we spent an hour and a half talking about it, I just noticed a note that I hadn't covered. Oh, no! And I really want to ask you, so for the people that are just res- listening to them in order, mm-hmm. they're going to be able to catch this one. Who the hell is Betty Brandt again? She was. She worked at the Daily Bugle. She worked at the Bugle, right? Yeah, and Parker dated her at one point as well. And is that it? She's not got superpowers, nothing? No, she dates Flash Thompson at some point as well. She's his... Main squeeze? Yeah. In the late, like, post-army, I think, or... When he's in the army and stuff. Ah, okay, okay. So, that was the only th- the only note I had written down. She was the character. I'm sure she was the character that um, Elizabeth Banks played in the Tobey Maguire series. Remember, with the dark sort of bowl cut wig, worked in the bugle, flirted with Parker. Oh yeah, oh. yeah. That's Betty Brown as well. I'm sure it is. Just I off the top of my head. I think yeah. you're right. Yeah, that's probably what threw me off because she didn't look anything like the character mm-hmm. in from the comic books. Yes. Because she is meant to have the she is meant to have like the tight body and the black. I mean, obviously she's like twelve or something in this, but she's not have dark hair. And mm-hmm. She was blonde. Yeah. Of course, part of the thing was to have people cast that didn't look like how they classically look. Yes. But anyway, if you want to hear more about the Spider Man Homecoming um, movie, check out our previous podcast, which is episode one hundred and forty four. There we go. And this is one hundred one hundred and forty five, obviously, because maths, and will be. One whole year if you listen to this on Saturday the 22nd since the first podcast went up. There we go then. Eh? 145 in one year. Happy buff day. Happy buff day indeed. Ah, you see what I did there? Yes. Happy, wait, happy buff day or happy buff day. For yeah, the, buff day. The, for the Scottish folks <laughs> that are there. Yeah, buff day. Okay, so Game of, Game of Thrones. I've watched all the Game of Thrones. Yes. Um... I have not rewatched them each time they came out. I've done it. I did it up to like season four, and I couldn't keep on doing it. Right. Um, and just when you're watching a movie a week and whatever, just you know, it's, you want to watch more than you can you can to really give it a good reference point and stuff like that. So I didn't manage to watch them before season seven came out. I did watch a recap. Mm-hmm. Found a really good recap video. I wonder if we should post it on the website. Go for it. Yeah, I wonder mm-hmm. if we should because it's actually quite decent. Yeah. Yeah. And the guy's humour is quite good, and it's also quite it's quite clean. It's not uh, it's not got anything too crazy in it or whatever. Because mm-hmm. we're all about keeping uh, keeping things keeping nice and shit clean and suitable for those not little, getting fucked up, yo. Yeah, suitable for kids. Obviously. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, yeah. Did you did you do a recap before you watched it? I did not. No. Wow, brave. Um, I think I've discussed it quite a lot at work, to the point. I kind of discussed a lot of theories and things like that anyway, and it was still pretty fresh in my mind uh, in the sense that all you need to remember is the Battle of the Bastards and Marjorie Tyrell is now dead. Yeah, I suppose that's... That's the important points the from important season points. six. For me, not... not oh, sorry, one of my clients watches Game of Thrones and they've just been watching it recently. Mm. So they're Catch like... Up. On series four or whatever. Oh. But, like, I watched series... Well, series one... Ten, seven years ago. Right, okay. Wow. 2010, when you think about it, right? 
Right, okay. Must be 2010. I think it was end of 10, start of 11, yeah. So Game of Thrones has been going for as long as my first business, Alpha Fitness, has been going. Oh, wow. There you go, then. It's pretty cool. They're also a sponsor of this podcast and the previous one, even though we didn't talk about it. No, we didn't. Didn't we get did. a chance. I was going to ask you, but we were already running over, so... Yeah, we are already running over. We had a, good, had a good flow a whole bunch of times. We kept... Other stuff kept popping, and, you know, and I think that, that tells you how good a film is when you keep on being able to talk about mm-hmm. it in a mostly, almost... Um, a tangential kind of way. Is yes. that a word? Yeah, it can be now. Is that a word? It can be now. So, um, yeah, I'm not getting to talk about it, so I was like, I need to watch this. Mm. Like, the only person that watches Game of Thrones that I know that isn't, like, part of the team is Lee. Mm. And I don't even know if he watched season six. But I, think, I think he had, but, you know, like, we talked about season six last year so mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying yeah, that's crazy so I was feeling pretty rusty but I, I rewatched a lot of it and that rundown was pretty decent so I was I was kind of I was I was feeling pretty good about watching it and um, I got to say the first episode was um, for me on a whole it was it was pretty decent mm-hmm. they kind of you know they they, 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 they showed you um, I mean they showed you Arya being Walder Frey at the start, which is really quite cool. And it was really a bit confusing for the first couple of minutes. Well, I and thought it was a flashback. Yeah, everyone thinks it's a flashback at first. I like to think I'd clicked pretty quickly it was Arya, mm, but yeah. probably not quickly enough, you know, so... I think I clicked pretty quickly, but when they first had it, I was like, is this... There's this set just before, maybe this is the meal they had before the Red Wedding and he's saying everyone, right boys, this is the crack. Uh-huh. But very, very quickly, I was like, nah, nah, yeah. it's, it's Arya. Now that raised some questions about Arya and her powers in terms of height, size, weight. Yes, yeah. And all this kind of stuff. So I don't know how that really works. She's got a ton of props that make her bigger, make her shoulders wider. Yeah, it's, it's, I wonder how, how, you, how she makes the mask. I think it's in the same way you've got to believe that there are smoke monsters that come out of Red Priest's vaginas. I can buy that more than I can, like, when something's really close to reality. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's in the same way, almost magic. Wizardry, witchcraft, some, some sort of... She puts of, the mask on, it just kind of <laughs> makes her yeah, I presume I, that I, the mask is from the person's face, like you kill them, you, I, I can't remember now, so you cut their, their face off. I don't think they did. I think it was made from stuff because it was like disposable. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, because otherwise they would only be able to be that person once. I'm sure the masks were disposable. So huh. I think they made them. I, I think that was explained in the previous season. Yeah, there was um, a good bit of that. There was a whole thing about the masks and that. So no, it's a good point though. So that was a cool bit, but I still kind of feel like that whole like her, her powers are a little bit too loose for my liking. Yeah, you got to suspend disbelief. I feel like a I'm bit suspending more. a little bit too much there. Yeah, you know, I did find that quite tricky to put, get my head round. Not even get my head round. I understand. It's just, just, just believe it is kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. It's like Squirrel Girl. She tells you she's beat Galactus, so you just have to accept that she's beat Galactus, kind of thing. I think it's just bullshit. Yeah, well, she's a cartoon comic character, so we'll let it go. It was the next scene that gave me the... Oh. Right, you, you've got some good proper written notes there. Let's see if I've managed to keep as good a notes as this person here. Right. Who's written really thorough ones, right? Yes. Like a, like a, like a review. Yes, this was on Google, but <laughs> this, okay. isn't, this isn't my notes. No, 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 that's no. not good. So the next scene was, you, you see a whole bunch of White Walkers. Yep. And you're like, okay, there's a couple of noob extras shuffling around. And then you're like, oh, oh, look at that. Oh, there's the CGI coming in with some skeleton warriors. Do you remember mm-hmm. that show? Skeleton warriors. Skeleton warriors. Skeleton warriors. Oh, that sounds familiar, actually, but no. It's fucking sweet, man. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember that. Send David some uh, some images of skeleton warriors. And then Just you watch see... what images you send me, you dirty. That's true. Then you see the giant... White Walker. Oh. I don't remember his name, but whoever he was. Was it I? I no. When? Uh, when? When? One one. When? 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 One one was the one that Ramsey killed. Uh huh. So if they I, if they resurrected him. No, I don't think so because he was killed further down the wall than that. I believe. Yes, that's right. So I think it's a different one. But he, that, he was killed inside the region. Yeah, yeah. Then you're like, oh my god, they've got one of them as well, and he's got the White I Walker. I thought they power. had three. Well, there seems like there's more. Yes, I can Yeah, this person counted three as well. Three yeah. zombie giants. Wow, that's that's that gives you a chance against a dragon. But the thing is, if you can 
like you get the dragon glass and the calf muscle of the giant, that should be enough. Yeah, it's true. So, and dragon glass was an important part of this uh, thing. But yeah, White Walkers, man. Seriously, those giants are just going to throw the skeletons over the walls. Yeah. And the skeletons will just survive because, well, Skeleton they just warriors. come back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's They'll going just... to be totally sweet. Yeah. Like, have you ever seen Flight of Dragons? No. Um, wait, I've got it on video. Give me a second. VHS. Kind of, kind of points Flight out your your dragons. age. Really, kind of says Flight Same of Dragons. Line. This mm. looks horrific. No, no, the art artwork looks shit there, but it's actually amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Um, James Earl Jones plays the villain in it. Ooh. Omadon, and he says this, he has this really cool scene about oh. man. And uh, if you've seen the film, you'll know what I'm talking about. He's talking about man and our shortcomings, and it's just fantastic. It's it's so good. Um, it used to be on YouTube. I can't find it anymore. Uh, but we should totally like try and watch it sometime. Bet your brother would have watched it. Yeah. Bet he might have squeezed that it. That dude's on. got a really shiny butt. Yeah, he does have a shiny butt, but it's it's really fucking sweet. But there's a bit where a giant grabs a dragon. He just fucking bears hugs it to death. Oh, kills it. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not not all the way. And the dragon's like breathing fire right in his face, and he's like, "Fire doesn't hurt giants, by the way." And oh, right, like, okay. And he's just squeezing the hell out of it. I imagine they put that scene in this. That's what I thought yeah. straight away. That'd be sick. Oh, man. If you guys, if you guys uh, have seen this film, you, you know what I'm talking about. The, and then, yeah, the funny thing with the White Walkers, and I've said this before, is their story makes all the other stories pointless. Like, but you still get caught up in the drama of Westeros at the same time. You still... Because yeah. if, they, if they breach the wall, it's, it's end game. you know? It's going to take a lot to take them down, you know? But, like, you still think, oh, my God, Cersei's on the Iron Throne or whatever. Um, or, you know, like, Bran has reached the wall and things like that. But I know, like, there's a lot of payoff in this episode alone, in a way. Mm. There's a lot of, like, we've completed the journeys from season since season four that yep. are really like well, let's I mean, bring everyone home and prep shit for the and battles prep it, yeah basically yeah because uh, the ne- very next scene is Brand reaching the wall you should see some of the spelling from my stuff on this <laughs> it's, it's amazing I don't want to uh, Brand reaching the wall and he's obviously he convinces them by saying you know like uh, I know what you dream of, or like, yeah, I, I, I can read your thoughts, or whatever he said to the guy. You know, I think he talked about a battle he was in, or something. And you've seen the White Walkers, and the guy's like, "Oh shit, yeah." Mm-hmm. So bring him in, and you're like, "Cool." Bran's finally got there. Kind of a bit of a shame that Jon Snow's not there anymore. Mm-hmm. And then we go straight to Jon Snow, and it just kind of ties up beautifully. Yeah, you know, it's it's really well woven, which the last season didn't feel like it was for me. Last season, a lot of it felt like fillers. And just, it, the last couple of seasons, seasons felt like they were padded out, but this one, but they always felt like they were woven quite well, to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. And th- this one feels like they've got it back. Mm-hmm. Season six, I didn't, I, I did not like. It, I almost, I almost said to you guys um, that I, I didn't want to even do a podcast on it. Well, season seven, episode one, anyway, seems to have. Pulled it back into that tight knit bit. Yep. People have almost forgotten about Hodor already, and that was quite a dramatic part of season six, you know, yeah. um, and later on as well. But I think the, the I think Hodor, it, Hodor, yeah, exactly. Hodor, Hodor. I, I don't actually, cry, don't cry. I actually thought I was pretty stupid. Right. Like, hold the door to Hodor. I just thought then, like. I thought they were reaching with that. The whole story of it was cool, mm. but that part of it, I was just like, nah. I don't think the main man wrote that bit. <laughs> he might have. I don't know. I don't. I don't. Do, I but don't think I think. So. I don't know. It's like the end of season six. You knew after they destroyed the Sept of Baelor, and you know, like Tommen was dead, Cersei was queen, John had beaten Ramsay, he was the king of the North again, and all this sort of stuff. Jon Snow. <laughs> and it was like you suddenly felt like. It was clearing the way to bring the stories in. Yeah. And that that's how this episode felt. Uh, and so you see the King of the North holding court with the Lords of the North. Yeah. And you see him, he's just talking through what they're going to be doing and things like that. 
and, and John's, then... John's saying even the women are going to get involved in the fighting. Yeah. And Leanna Mormont gets another wee cracking moment in it. She was quality when she tells the guy, although I'm pretty sure if this was season one of Game of Thrones, the guy would have said, Be quiet, woman! And uh, just, or, or just fucking said, oh, I'll, I'll kill you! Silence! Like, Silence! I'll kill you! <laughs> yeah, basically, like he would not have put up with that, and I kind of felt like he should have put up a little bit more fight to that situation. Just a fraction. I just love the fact that he's like, uh, DGR, my lady, and no one has questioned, and she just cuts him off brilliantly. And she's like, and I don't need your permission to defend the North. You know, and it's yeah. just Yeah, like, I just think, I just find it really hard to buy that he would even put up with that shit from some kid. I think... As cool as she was. Yeah, I think she's got a bit of power, though. Even though she's only got, like, 35 men in her army or something like that, I think there's... There's probably someone behind her, yeah. Yes. But uh, then you obviously get to see Sansa being a heel. Yeah. She was just like, well, John, I disagree with everything you say because of reasons. And John's like, and both, both, both points were valid. She was well, saying... The, they are very the, valid. The family should be punished entirely, like, and stripped of their assets for betraying the Starks. And he says, well, should the kids be punished for the sins of the fathers, kind of thing. Which is, he, a, is an age-old sort of debate, really. Well, well, exactly, but also, I mean, he would presumably... He was punished for the sins of his mother being a whore mm-hmm. by... Uh, Ka- Caitlin Stark. Ka- Catelyn Stark. Catelyn Stark. Yeah. I'm doing okay with the name so far. You're doing actually, I'm, tra- I'm quite surprised by Catelyn Stark. So he's gonna have a different perspective on that. Whereas mm-hmm. um, Sansa, which I've spelled S A N S A. That's right. Oh wow, amazing. Um, Sansa has had a completely different perspective in terms of well, my my father was a a man of honor and his word and all this kind of stuff. And look what happened to him. He was naive. Well, that's what and she's saying, with, yeah. And she even says that later on in the episode, and I'm kind of like, for me, I, I like Jon Snow's sentiment, but I just don't feel like you could really... I don't know if it's actually practical. You know what I mean? To keep them on. Yes. Well, this... Wow. I suppose... They, well, you bend the knee and all this kind of stuff, and it's like, yeah... kids, though. That's the thing. These are kids now in charge of the houses because the parents died. They'll probably be ever, ever so thankful to Jon Snow and probably, in a lot of ways, potentially more loyal. Yeah, and they'll look up to him because they are kids and he's a young leader. And he's... What is he? What, he can only be... He can only 20s. be 20. I think you're like, mm-hmm. they were off like 16, 17. Yeah, they and were I, all... I'm not sure, is it, is it seven years they've passed in Game of Thrones? I think so. I think, it's, it? I think it's six years that's passed so far. I think we're in years... I could be wrong. You might find that seasons one, two, and three were over one year. Yeah, I'm not sure to be honest. Be but no, that's what that's what she says. She says that he is good at ruling, um, but he's not being smart in yep. her eyes. And she says, like you know, obviously, Rob was too hormonal, and he went in there. Hormonal. <laughs> yeah. Well, he did. He ruled with his. Yeah, he did. No, you're right. And he got that other woman <laughs> pregnant rather than a. Uh, you know, the right one. The Walder Frey yeah. arrangement, and that got him killed, got them all killed because he betrayed. And Eddard was too stupid to back down when he needed to, or, you know, get out when he needed to, and he got his head lopped off for it. Yeah. So it's. Uh... Ned, I mean, when I first watched it, I was like, oh, of course, it. They're not, they're, they can't be killing Sean Bean. He's the main character of the show. Then they kill him, and I'm like, what the fuck? That, that, I mean, we've talked about this before, but that was just. That set the scene for the fact that no one is safe. Yeah. And that's what's made Game of Thrones so popular, I think. It's the fact that your favourite character, you're basically watching how they avoid death. Yeah. Rather than how they live life. You know? And realistically, just about everyone's got to die that's been from season one. Mm-hmm. And when, if you went back and watched season one one or two more times since your first watching of it, um, I don't know if you have or not. No, no, you've not. I have. There's a lot and of foreshadowing of. There's a events. lot of fore- there's there's so much like they they mention so many people that don't pop up to like four five. Well, there's like, Benjamin oh, Stark. God. He disappeared in the first episode. Benjamin Stark. Which one is that? The one who came back in season six and he's half oh, yes. white locker. Yes. yes. Or what's he called now? I can't remember. But the black is he not called like the Black Raven or something weird I can't like that? I remember. Um, but yeah, he, he he disappeared in the first episode. But if you watch season one back, after having watched it the first time, all you can see is how fucking stupid Ned Stark is. Mm-hmm. And do you know what? He deserved to die. Because he was just... 
He wasn't playing the game. He wasn't playing the game of Thrones. No. no he was like, playing he a different was, game. He was trying to be honourable the whole time and Which? good will out and stuff. No, it's Joffrey. It's no. No. It'll be done. And that's 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 why he screwed up. I tell you what I liked when you were talking about Sansa being a heel. How she dealt with Littlefinger. Oh, just that was brilliant. But I still think something's gonna. There's gonna be collusion in there, though. She's gonna kill Jon Snow. Possibly, for the watch. Although they don't wear watches back then, so what's she gonna? For the robes. For she'll, the robes. She'll take his robes instead. Um, it was just about what she says to Littlefinger. Don't try to seize the last word. I'm sure it's something clever. Or someone like that. She's just like, no, I'm having the last say, bitch. Be gone. She's grown on me so much. I used to hate her guts. I, I, the thing with Sansa is she's always been pretty, but never been like, mmm. But this, like, just in this like, first episode, you're like, mm. oh, no. It's the all black, I think. It makes her look more evil. I don't know. I've got a thing for redheads. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Um Then, after we've dealt with the whole Jon Snow bit, we jump down to... King's Landing. Yes, and go we do. and see Cersei. C e r s i. C e r s e y. S e y. Oh well. Oh well, John. And Jamie. And Jamie Lannister. So Cersei's standing on top top of a. Well, it's not a mural. Is it? Is it? It's just literally a painting of the UK, otherwise known as <coughs> <laughs> Westeros. Westeros. There yeah. we go. <laughs> um, and. I thought that was quite a nice little touch, like I a it was different, sweet. different set piece to be standing on, mm-hmm. you know. And the mat, and though I'm assuming they'll use it with, you know, little like they do in Dragonstone with the table, and they were planning out there. Yeah, they'll put pieces there and move them about, and maybe maybe she'll stand or sit atop, looking down, and have people moving about as pieces. Possibly, yeah. You know, like oh, the queen wants to do the board again. They need to put our fucking night helmets on and shit. How long does her neck look there? Oh, it's obscene, right? It's because of the the shoulder pads being the same colour as the throne behind her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes her neck look ridiculously yeah. long. She was so pretty back in the first episode when you see like her long, flowing blonde hair. Mm-hmm. Like, she's aged a lot. Yes. And I think and because lo- she's had lo- so many scrapes. And, yeah, you can, and this, like being... One of the High Sparrows prisoners and things as well. Mm-hmm. Really, she looked she, like when I watched the recap, the season season one, she looks like a twenty year old there, and now mm-hmm. she looks like she's lived twenty years. You know, I just yeah. and, and I'm sure they've done that on purpose to a certain extent. She's weathered the storm. Same with Jamie. Jamie's like this young, handsome buck. Mm-hmm. It's only been seven years. You know, yeah, what I mean? and he's aged as he well. He looks he looks old now. He looks older now than he did when he had a full beard. Oh, I forgot about the full beard, yeah. Yeah. He, um... I, I've come to really like Jamie Lannister. Yeah. Every, for ages now. Yeah, Jamie's been cool. since I think since he teamed up with Brienne. Yeah. It's been since then that he's been... Oh, it's when he first meets her, he's like, God, you really are the ugliest woman I've ever laid eyes on. Oh, it's just quality, isn't it? <laughs> he's, just, he's hilarious. Oh, he's brilliant. And that, and I, I'm... I'm worried about how his story's going to pan out, to be honest. I just hope that... Kills her. He kills Cersei. You I've, think so? I've thought so forever. I, I don't know. I think she'll she'll have him off beforehand. He kill, I think he'll try and the mountain will get him. Check him out. Check it out. He kills Cersei after the mountain giving her a decent blow. Hmm. But actually, she's like, well, sorry, brother, but I gave you the, the lotus flower of poison death drink two right, days yeah. ago and you're going to die yeah and then I think and he's like I, five finger death punch boom, 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 boom. I think they die together in their each other's arms possibly as as basically the end of the lineage so to speak mm-hmm. yeah, they are the, as they say the last Lannisters who matter who matter yeah yeah so I think I think they will they'll die in each other's arms and that's the only way to do it yeah it would be nice if Jamie could have had an okay could have got together with Brienne, but I really think they're pushing Brienne together with Big Ginge. Tormund. Tormund. <coughs> the... I've got Big Ginger. <laughs> Big Ginger. Tormund, the leader of the Free Folk. Uh, I can't remember his second name. But, no, and the interesting thing is they are basically surrounded by enemies in King's Landing. So up north you've got the Starks, as you've just seen. Mm-hmm. Um, to the east, they've got um, Daenerys. 
It's just landing. Daenerys with Dothraki, Unsullied, Dragons, and what else? Something else? Some other tribe as well, right? Well, the, I think she's going to have House Tyrell and the Sand as well. The Sand. Oh, yeah. yeah. From, from them. And some of the Greyjoys. Some of them. Not the Greyjoys. Yes, no, you're right. The some Greyjoy. of the... Well, the Ironborn. Uh, the Iron, yes, the Ironborn uh, as well. So, yeah, it's... Luck- it's crazy. Luckily, Cersei has Euron. And I think they'd managed... Do you know what? I think they played Euron so well. It was it was a brilliant scene. Because I thought it was going to be... And then she gets married to Euron. Mm-hmm. And you're like... Oh, they're not doing that. Cool. And it's just like something else that happened in Spider-Man, just real quick. You know how Michael Keaton kind of said, I'm doing this for her. Mm-hmm. Well, I thought we were going to get the whole, well, you don't know this, but she's actually got this terrible illness and she's going to die and I need all this money for these technolog- technological things. Nah. But you never just, got that. Nah, that's just I was a, father's, a father's love for his daughter. I was waiting for that over-egged bullshit mm. and I was like, oh, all right, okay, just, okay. Good on them. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah, I was. I, th- I think they managed to, I think Cersei managed to sidestep doing another marriage thing We've seen a lot of marriages for power. She's like, nah, prove yourself. And he's like, sweet, mm. I'll do it. Uh, the I'll Iron do it. Fleet. Um, who, who is the actor that plays him? He, I, I don't know, actually. He he was in something recently, and I was like, oh my god, that's Euron Greyjoy. He is brilliant at whatever I saw him in. Oh, he's, he's good as Euron Greyjoy. I don't know what else he's in. Still don't buy that he's the uncle. Seems too young. Yeah, but, but then uncle can be quite young. I knew, when I was a kid, I knew someone whose auntie was about six months younger than her because her parents were really old Yeah. when they had her and her sister had a baby at about the same time. Well, I suppose, you know my illegitimate love child that I never talk about yes. that I had when I was 15? Yes. Yes. So my, my sister was born when I was 12, She's so she would technically be an aunt when she was three. Yeah, exactly. But I suppose it could work out yeah. that way. I, that was, I, jokes, folks. Just jokes. I don't do children. I've got soul swimmers. <laughs> I do women. Um, so yeah, and I, I just thought that whole scene was good and I love the wee digs at Jamie as well and I think he could be the Boy. wedge. He could be the wedge that dri- is driven in between Jamie and yeah. Cersei. I can't remember what he said. He said something and he was like, and I've got both hands. Yeah, I've got both hands. And Jamie's like, you motherfucker! Uh, and he says, <laughs> you said what? <laughs> I, I, I killed my brother. It's quite satisfying. You should try it sometime. Oh, or something like yeah. that. I can't remember exactly what he said. A wonderful feeling. Yep. Uh, really good. Really good. And then by my money, we go up to Brienne with teaching Podrick. Pod, Podrick how to fight. Yes. Which I kind of feel like she's going to end up with Podrick more so than she's going to end up with uh, Tormund. No, I don't think she's going to end up with Podrick. No? I don't think... He's the tamer of women. He's the pleaser of I many... I forgot about that. Many she's wives. not interested in that at all. I know. But and Tormund... And she's got a thing for Jamie. Jamie's her... Jamie's her... Mm, yeah. Maybe... Her yeah. poster boy. Pin up. Yeah, that's true. And he likes her. That's... I, I don't think he likes her, likes her like that because she's not his sister. But... He does like her. He had this soft little wave as she rode away. That's true, he does uh, like her. Where do you think Tormund fits in this? T-O-R-M-O-N-D? Hmm? M-U-N-D. M-U-N-D, okay. Tormund. Uh, I don't know, I think he could just be a bit of comic relief. With a bit of comic relief, bit of banner. You lucky, you lucky bugger. Or whatever it was he said when he seen Podrick getting beat up. I thought it was quite funny as well. And he's the same size as her. Almost. Yeah, yeah, that's, I think that's the thing. I think if they got together, it would be like, probably break down some building, like the most disgusting sex you've ever seen oh, anywhere. Oh, absolutely like, just obscene. I think, I think she's probably a virgin. Yeah, I reckon she will be. I think probably men have advanced on her and she's like, no, I'm <laughs> a knight. <laughs> My vagina is so strong, it will crush it in half. Yeah, yeah it will crush you. It'll fold it up and spit it out. <laughs> And then, and the, the, the episode moves along really nicely. It does. It goes and visits everyone. And it's interesting because in the first series, you'd maybe have like an episode where they saw like you focused on three characters, mm-hmm. and it would sometimes feel like, in a way, it, not it wasn't it was never dragging because the writing was so good. Yeah. But over time, it seems like they fit more in each time. Yeah. And this one seemed to jump around a whole bunch. But in a, in a good way. In a good way. Because it didn't just go two minutes, next person, two minutes, next person. It focused on them for a good five, ten minutes and then moved yeah, on. Yeah, gave them good stuff. But yeah. then we got to the bit of the show where I wasn't quite sure if I liked the casting of it. And then I thought, 
uh, it's not that bad, I suppose. What was that? And I could be wrong with this, because I'm not that young or hip. Maybe you'll know. But did Arya meet Ed Sheeran? Arya met Ed Sheeran. <laughs> yeah, okay, so Ed Sheeran's crew were sitting there chilling and having their having their tea or whatever. Yes. And I, I was convinced they were going to get all rapey on her. I thought they were going to pin her down and take a turn, yeah. I, but... I was- but they, they, they seemed as nice as they were. I'm not convinced, though. I'm not convinced about... But then they might just um, be young, naive men. Like, young, naive boys who are trying to be men and they meet a woman and they're all just like, Oh, pinger, let's... Uh, let's be polite. Yes. Have some wine. Like... Listen to Jam Jar. Which one, do, which one do you think is going to be the raper? If the guy if, with the dark hair. See, I thought so, but I thought that... He's got a bit of a Kylo Ren look about Kylo him. Kylo Ren vibe, but then mm. I thought to myself, wouldn't it be more surprising and very Game of Thrones like if it was Ed Sheeran? Yeah, but I think if he would do it for the branding. Yes, exactly right. That he he will be himself basically in this, which is horrible. Probably get killed quite like you'll be like, oh, he got killed. Oh, that's a shame. Mm-hmm. Like or, not or, weekly, or he just waved by and played guitar. Yeah, or played fiddle in his Irish band or something. Because because you notice that after he done his singing, he basically wasn't he didn't speak. I like that about it because I didn't like his cameo in there. There wasn't no. I didn't like it because he just he wasn't made up to look different or anything like that. He had his modern hairstyle. He was he was Ed Sheeran at a comic con. Ah, basically, yeah. You know, pretending to be Game of Thrones, and it just kind of took you out of the scene a bit. Yeah, I don't think there's any need for him to be in that, actually. No. Um, but no, the, the dark-haired guy, he's the one who's going to... Well, the thing is, that's, he, he seems like obviously the one that's going to be it, so I think it's going to be the nice kid. Maybe, but then... Gave him the brandy wine. That's what I never... Black grapefruit wine, sorry. I followed, finished, I started a thought, I never finished it. I liked the fact that he was in it, but he wasn't the lead part. Ed he, Sheeran? Yes. I liked it. He wasn't they... like, oh, welcome to my band of brothers! <laughs> yeah, it, exactly, it wasn't like, oh, we've got Ed Sheeran, let's give him loads of good shit, or anything like that. It was just, we've got Ed Sheeran, moving on. They probably did the cameo as best as you can. Yeah. You know, for... I, I still think they should have, like, scarred him up. And I still think there's Got no rid need. of his hair or something. No, well, they're... but then other, like, Sigur Ross, Coldplay, they've all been in there as well. So Who? Musicians. Coldplay were at the Red Wedding. Really? I'm sure that it was Coldplay at the Red Wedding. Who was the other one? Sigur Ross. Sigur Ross? Sigur. I don't know if I'm saying it right or not, but he's been in it as well at some what, point. What is that? What was a Sigur Ross? It's a band or a oh, guy. Right. I, I don't know exactly because I, I missed that one, but I know Coldplay were in there. I'm sure it was the band at the Red Wedding. Hmm. Yeah, Coldplay. Do you know what would work really well for Aria, actually? Is if someone comes and kills all of our new pals. And then she kills them. And then she gets ten faces of ten random young lads that is hard to track and are not famous. Maybe that's what's going to happen. That would make sense. And then, obviously, it means they can shoehorn a whole bunch of Ed Sheeran cameos into places. That makes less desire. It makes sense, but it makes it less desirable, Mm -hmm. certainly. Anyway, let me move forward to The Hound. Yes. And if if I'm going too fast, I'm just trying to... We want to summarise. We want to summarise yeah. quite decent then talk about it, but it's going to be, yeah. So we the Hound, and what I've called them is the Fire Knights. And the Fire Knights, brilliant. <laughs> I don't know if that's what you call them, hey. but... Well, I don't know either. I call them Sir Beric Dundarian. Sh- sure. <laughs> and the, the Red Priest. Sir Brendan from Dundonian. Aye, exactly. Yeah. And the, the Red Priest, because I can't remember what his name is. Ah, well, this is the first inappropriate um, joke. Go for of it. the show, um, I'm not. I'm not scared of guys with top knots who are actually bald. Ha ha ha! You got a top knot. Ha ha ha! I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> like, what? I know the hounds like totally wide is wide and dry and the whole thing and it. It what it, like it suits that style of sense of humor, mm-hmm. but I don't think he's making fun of a guy's top knot. Also, who the fuck calls it a top knot then? I mean, I know that's what it technically is. It's more of a Japanese thing, personally. But I just thought it seemed like a little bit like, let's make a joke about top knots because kids have top knots nowadays. Maybe. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, that's what I got from it. I thought they were... Oh, there's the Ed Sheeran bit. There's the famous guy thing. And they've got the top knot joke. And I was just like, nah, I don't like that. There's always little bits like that that slip into Game of Thrones. Is there, though? Well, there was the Dothrakis in the first episode last season... Remember, and it was almost like a Saturday Night Live sketch or something like that. It was fucking awful. Yeah, it was terrible. But that's why I hated season six. Yeah. 
But all I, those scenes before that wasn't like that. See, I, I loved, I just loved the hound in that scene because he was just ripping into them constantly, and I loved how they were just like. Almost just like, oh, that's just him, you know. Oh, oh cheers, big man. Yeah, uh, he's like, I don't dislike you, I just don't really like you either, or <laughs> whatever it was. He, You're a cunt. <laughs> yeah, he's 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 he is funny. He dropped that C bomb so many times. I was loving it. Um, what do you think his connection is to the people that were there, if any? People that were burned there. Remember when he was travelling with Aria? Yep. They went to a house and he robbed the guy. Did he? Remember, it was like a fair pay for a fair day's wages or something like that. And um, then he took the money. He took everything, basically, and left them and says they'll starve, they'll be dead by winter. And that's exactly what had happened. He'd come back to this house and the man and his daughter were dead. And the hound buried them because he knew he technically killed them. So... Oh. I think it's season four... Was it I, season four he was travelling with Arya? I think so, yeah. Well, no. I suddenly really dislike him now for that. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was... Oh, that's kind of sad. <sighs> so it was his fault. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he was the one who basically left them to die. Because they had nothing. He took everything. Stole the farmer's silver. Huh. I feel quite sad now. Well, he was repenting. Oh, no, he's not repenting. That's not the wrong word. He was doing what little he could. Well, could he just taken a fair pay for a fair day's work? It was the hound. He was at the height of his healness. He wasn't a hound then. He was, like, he was, he was turning into a tweener. That's why this means you're like, kind of like, you're a good you're a good guy who does bad guy stuff. Yeah. To get over, or you're a bad guy who does good, good yeah, guy well, stuff. Yeah, well, he, he was you're getting tweening, but he did his bad guy stuff still. Yeah, I so. suppose. It was, uh, yeah. But um, I, I'm too I, soft for, sometimes I think I'm too soft for Game of Thrones. I thought I thought it was quite interesting that the hound looks into the fire and rather than just going, "This is a pile of pish," he actually said, "Pile of cunts." I no <laughs> pile. Of, he just uh, he actually said he's seen the the wall. He's seen I see a wall. I see the wall, kind of thing. You know, it's almost like an episode of Catchphrase or something like that. Well, it was kind of weird that we didn't see anything in the fire. But that, that's the thing with the, the Lord of Light and that you never see what's in the fire. And now that's would be too very cheesy. true. Now it'd be too. It would be, well, I was thinking. I was thinking, could they do anything with that? Mm-hmm. And when I was watching it, I was I was trying to look, and I was like, is there, is there actually anything happening in the fire? Is it is it burning in a weird way? Thing is, you were just seeing him. You weren't seeing the fire. Well, you, you occasionally would look at the fire. Yeah, but when he was speaking and when he was actually seeing things, you weren't seeing the flames. But that was quite a, quite a cool we scene to show that he's been travelling. seems like they're going really far up north. I presume they're going to the wall. Probably. Um, um, which makes makes a lot of sense in terms of being the first port of combat. Now, did, did uh, the Fire Knight, does he have a sword that's made of fire, that goes on fire? Do I remember that happening? That was happened that... in the trailers. In the trailer for season seven. So that doesn't happen in season two or three when he fights them, no? No, I don't think so. Uh, maybe okay. I can't remember. Oh, I think it did. Does he not go to fight him, and then he's like flame on, and then the, the hound's like, cause, "Oh, wanks!" Because he's petrified of fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so that rings a bell. Um, but that was, um, yeah, that was that. What's his name? Beric. So Beric. So Beric. Yep. Yeah. I'm gonna um, put that in beside the fire. But then he see, he sees the wall, and he sees the army of the dead passing around it near a castle by the sea. Now this was something that I thought about. And it was something B E R I C. Oh, cool! And it was something I was thinking about when they were talking about the the wall and the American border. You could swim around it, <laughs> and so I was thinking the same logic would apply in Game of Thrones. They go around the wall, and that's exactly what they're doing. But the castle that he mentioned, I can't remember the name. Uh-huh. That's where John's sending the wildlings. That's where the free folk are going oh, as well. Yeah, yeah. So that's just all that is is fuel for the Walkers' army. Tormund's going to become a White Walker. He's going to become a, a force to be reckoned with as a White Walker. I reckon. He's going to go against Brienne, isn't he? Probably. She'll have to take him out. Um, with Dragonglass, which there is an abundance of under Dragonstone. Allegedly so, yes. Yes. And that's where that's where Stannis Baratheon used to be. Yes, that's right. That was that was my understanding, but that was originally the Mad King's keep. Like his original castle, right? Yes. The Targaryen, like Targaryen's own castle before they were in charge of King's Landing, mm-hmm. basically. Um, but before we got to that, 
we yep. were doing a whole bunch of Sam Sam Tarley. Yes, Samuel so, Tarley. Sam was cleaning out all the the piss pots and everything, and it was. You know what I found gross about that is the the shit in the pots. Yeah. Started to look the same as the slop he was putting in yeah. the food and that, and obviously he wouldn't be doing that. But it was just, it was almost showing that it's just like in and out, in and out the same way, basically. Yeah. You know, it's just passing through you. Well, that's what it, that's, I think that's what it was meant to be. Yeah. I think it was meant to be literally like... And it was quite funny. And show the mundaneness of his job. And the fact he couldn't stop retching, even after he'd been obviously doing this a long time, oh, he was still boring. retching all the time. I don't even want knowledge that yeah. badly. Mm-hmm. But um, I thought that it was pretty funny when, and I don't know what his name is, um, old guy who... Fancied, Jim Broadbent. No. All right. Okay. No, the man with the stone arm. Ah, uh, Sir Jorah. Sir Jorah, that was it. Sir yes. Jorah Mormont. Yes. He, uh, he's obviously locked up there somehow. Yep. Which is really interesting. Possibly because he's so ill. Spelling. Uh, J O R A H. I don't know. Sir Jorah. Well, but just because I, I'm wanting the spelling, because I'm going to keep notes. Yeah. Every week. Uh-huh. And if I get the spellings right now, I'll be okay. Um, so Sir Jorah, I, th- I was like, I, I mean, I knew someone was, you knew it as well. Someone's going to grab him on uh, that last was, one. Yeah. And you're thinking, who's it going to be? And it's him. And you're like, oh, I think that's he's such. He's had such a bad rap. Uh huh. I've know, always liked his character. I've always liked him, and I think that I think he could smash up like a, a 19 year old. I think he's he's got. Uh, you tell me, ladies, maybe fellas. I think he's got like a certain. Uh, Older man charm. Older man, yeah, exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. You can imagine him smashing. He's got a show on Netflix, I want to say it's called like Jack Taylor or something like that. Oh, yeah, okay. And it kind of looks like, it, it, it looks like Taken for TV. <laughs> and I kind of fancy it. I know I'd like it fine, but I've just never got around to watching it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought it was cool that he's made it all the way there. I don't know how the fuck he managed to get there, actually. No. I can't remember where we and left the time off, frame though. he was. Yeah, so if you guys know, you guys need to let us know. Yep, you do. Um, and Sam's just going about doing all his stuff, and 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 he finds obviously he finds that book that you just mentioned. He finds out that there's all this dragon glass under Dragonstone. Yes, Dragonstone. that's right. And, and so that can be used to forge weapons, but it can also be used to stop the spread of. Stone skin or whatever it is that Sir So it got. can. Yeah, because it was used on Shireen. A wee girl. It was used to kind of stop it growing on her, wasn't it? Yes, and she was just mildly disfigured in her face. Yes. So, maybe... Did Sir Jor get any extra powers, like extra strength or anything from being a rock monster? Don't know. Be interesting to find out. Uh, and then the last thing we kind of see is Daenerys arriving at... Um, yeah, well, Sam said he hadn't heard of her arriving, which is interesting because surely the, the Keepers of Knowledge would be one of the first to find out. So shows it's kind of concurrent, it's happening at the same time as... Yeah. Yeah, it's not like she's making a play for this beach and people are going, oh my god, they're heading for this beach or anything. And it's she's almost, got there. What's that? It's almost like she came there possibly at the start while they're all making plans, it just happens we're seeing it at the end. Yeah. For dramatic effect you mm-hmm. know Cause no one really knows they, they're hearing that she's on her way but she's there yeah um, and she goes in, into the war room and you're like and she tears down the Baratheon kind of stuff uh uh-huh. you're yeah. like fuck now she's got a castle and she's here and she's here she's finally here mm-hmm. you know this is the first time Daenerys has set foot on Westeros in any media TV, books, anything. Yeah, it's true, This yeah. is the first time of her touching Westeros. Touch my Westeros. Oh. <laughs> Dad jokes. Um, I, I, I didn't see... I mean, I'm sure we'll see him in the next episode. Who was... Remember her kind of... her? Remember the guy that replaced... That was replaced as an actor? Yeah, Ed Skeen replaced... Uh, was replaced by a uh, thing. What was his name? I was just talking about him yesterday. He got left behind, basically. Why was he left behind again? To he look after the... To look after... Is it Marine? I want to say it's Marine, yeah. Yeah. And where is her red woman? Because she had her own red woman across there, remember? One of them turned up. Oh, the new one at the end, eh? Yeah, she's and, maybe and She's maybe just... 
Varys, is it Varys? Yes, yeah, Varys was there. Varys was shite in it when he met her. He was, she was the first person to best him. Apart from like, him and Littlefinger would uh-huh. jive each other, you know, mm-hmm. would raz each other, and they probably fucking loved it. And if one of them killed the other one, they'd be like, "You fucking one a you prick," uh-huh. basically in a more eloquent, eloquent way. Yeah. But she actually was like, uh, "You know what? Suck a dick," and he's like, "Oh, I don't have a dick." <laughs> oh. And he, 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 like, she made him look foolish. Oh, I'm trying to remember the name and it's going to bug me and I don't want to look it up. I want to remember it. But well, while you're doing that, so loads of stuff happened. I'm going to have to look it up. Loads of stuff happened so in the episode. It was sewed together really well, I thought. Um, a lot of stuff happened without it being too jumpy. It was good pacing, I thought. There was a fart joke in there somewhere when Sam was clearing up this, the, 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 the piss pots and the, one of the older priest's farts. And I was like, oh, fart joke. Oh, don't like the top knot. Oh, not sure about Ed Sheeran. But they did it in the best way they probably could. Maybe they were kind of, the studio said like, oh, we've got them, you've got to use them. And they're like, oh, fuck's sake. Okay, fine, do this. You know? Mm-hmm. Maybe had a line and they cut it out. So, apart from those little bits, pieces... The one thing I really hoped for, and what they, not, what they managed in the last first episode of Game of Thrones, was I didn't really feel it then. I know Daenerys had made it to um, the King's Landing. Is that the name of the country? Uh, Westeros. Westeros. Yes. I know she made it to the UK, and I was kind of like, uh, that's not quite as exciting as finding out the Red Woman is a fucking hag. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Or, or, or that was or, upsetting more than exciting. Yeah, it was, but. I kind of just felt like that last bit wasn't that impactful because I, I knew she was coming. Yeah. And maybe it's, maybe if you're more of a fan of Daenerys, but I find her to be a fucking annoyance more than anything else. Yeah. And a, and a very, very um, secret heel. Have you got it? I have to look it up. Dario Naharis. Who's that? That was the, the guy that got left behind. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Her fuckboy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Basically. Aye. Left mine to, to, to rule in her absence. Ed Screen. Dario Naharis. Yeah, I prefer the second actor to... I prefer the second actor as well, actually. Yeah. The first one looks too much like you. Eh? Do you think? That's true. It's not... Shut she up. She that beard. She with no facial hair. First glance. Oh, it's Johnny. Oh, look at that. Nah. I'm Sorry, not, not Johnny. That guy. Buff geek. <laughs> I'm way better looking than that guy. Surely I look more like the other guy with the dark hair. Don't look yeah, like anyone. You tell yourself that. Hey, anyway. Well, all I'm saying is I reckon I could have been up for that casting. You could have probably done that, yeah. Yeah, I could have done her. I have. No, you haven't. But I think, I actually think Jason Momoa has in real life because the way he talks about her. Yeah. 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 Oh, he, he probably would have. He, he probably he probably squeezed it. And I think his wife would be okay with it. They seem like they've got one of those interesting relationships, you know. <laughs> yeah. How was work today? Don't uh, ask, don't tell. Fucked my co-star. All right, cool. How was she? She was not bad. Not bad. Not bad. What about you? Yeah, you know, me and, like, she's probably got, like, a... <laughs> Shag um, the pool boy. <laughs> she, probably, she, probably, she probably fucks, like, some artist friend she knows mm. and it's all, like... Have you ever seen, um, like, a High Fidelity? Yes. She's in High Fidelity. Oh, sure. Yeah. She's the... The get off it in the, the Singer. Oh, all right, okay. Singer with the dreadlocks, the whole thing, yeah? Mm-hmm. She kind of feels like free peace and love uh, and everything. Okay. And I imagine that's probably how it goes down there for Big J. I think so. Um, so I, I, I wasn't. I was watching this like, oh, fuck. It, I can't be bothered watching this, but I will watch it. And then I actually ended up getting sucked right back in and liking it. And apart from a couple of little bits that I thought, mm, I really like the writing, the pacing, so much of it. So I was really down with this episode. I don't yeah. know, how do you feel about no, it? No, I'm the same. I'm, I'm easy pleased when it comes to things like this. Um, so. See, I'm high maintenance across the board all the time. <laughs> but I really, I did really enjoy this episode. I thought it brought it back. You weren't, nobody was expecting big action, big battle, big story points, anything like that. It was just pulling it back in, like I said, from the end of season six, sort of funneling it a bit and pushing it forward and getting it going again for the next season. And so I thought it was, I thought it was really enjoyable and I'm looking forward to seeing it again on probably Monday night yeah I'll, I'll, I'm sure when I'm going to be able to do it because 
Monday. I'm not going to tell you my schedule. You don't mm. need to know that. No. Nope. You don't need to know that. And it's probably Wednesday now when you're listening to this anyway. And it could be, yes, so Steve. you never know. You never freaking know. <laughs> um, I suppose we're going to have to rate it because we're going to be doing it weekly now, aren't we? Yeah. So I'm not... out of 10 or out of 5. We've not discussed this. Ooh. Ooh. 5's Ooh. probably easier. I think, think 10's good for film. Right, okay. And what's the scale? I don't want to do bananas. I want to do something more appropriate to Game of Thrones. Ten daggers, ten dragons, ten titties. Ten titties is out of five, though. No, but ten titties is both our scores. Oh, right, aye. It could be five pairs of tits. Yeah, no, I don't think I should make it tits. Okay. I think, I think um, that'll, that's just putting off females that want to listen to this. Well, they might like tits. Okay. Don't I'm, be so prejudiced. I'm not saying they don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we go with dragons. Dragons is good. Dragons for the game. Dragons is good. Yeah. Okay. So, out of five dragons for me. Yep. It got me back into Game of Thrones, and it felt like a quite a quick hour. So I'm going to give it four out of five dragons Ooh, it's pretty fucking high you 80%, know what I'm saying nice I think I'm going to give it I'm going to go for three and a half three and a half just over the halfway mark yeah okay so half a point for Ed Sheeran half a point for the fart jokes <laughs> half a point for the top knot I almost went three and a half as well actually I've got to be yeah. honest but the fact that I was I was so close to saying you guys write articles about it <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to watch I don't even care how it ends might still happen you never know I, well yeah I mean yeah maybe this this podcast could accompany an article oh that would be joyous so you listen to it while well, you're reading ah. oh, the, the reading won't take 50 well, odd minutes but yeah but I mean I've already written a whole bunch of notes mm-hmm. my own notes as opposed to ones you've stolen from <laughs> Google I said they were on Google you I did was... say that you did say that but if they wanted to go to the website and check out some of the fare that we have there because we've got a new article written by um, by Ian. The, the senior Stoby. Yes, he, that. he wrote one last night, and that he managed to managed to get onto the website, which is a, it's, it's not it's, it's already the most viewed article of the month. Fucking hell! Look at him, eh? Uh-huh. The guy knows knows how to write stuff people want to want to hear about. You know, yeah. he knows how to go deep. To be fair, we marketed pretty heavy as well. We also marked it a hell of a bunch, yeah. Apart uh, from me, because I actually signed out of Facebook. I don't know if you guys noticed. No. Nope. So didn't in, notice. In the last two days, have you been able to post on the page the same? I haven't tried. Have I tried? Mm, you must. I'd be interested. I've if, shared... It was a tester. I shared something the other day. Yesterday. I'm, no, I was maybe later last night. Or I went day. to, and it... I didn't do it because someone else had done it. Well, I signed out because I wanted to test something, but that I, I signed out really late and didn't tell you guys anything, uh, make up okay. anything. Ian's article has already made it to one, two, three, four, five, s- the sixth most viewed article of all time. And what is the article about? George A. Romero. Okay, so... An obit piece. Hmm? An obit piece, which... An obit piece, which yeah. Pro- compelled him to write his first article on the site. He's had to. Yeah. He had to. So there we go. Anyway, that's enough banning him up because he's a ban. Ah, exactly. So Bam. Game of Thrones have got a uh, seven and a half out of ten dragons. There we go. That's a fair, decent whack I of dragons. I sorry for that half dragon though. Yeah. Is it like the front half with the fire breathing or the back half with the spiky tail? Well, let's just say it's a baby dragon. Okay, yeah, yeah, a baby dragon. Seven dragons and a baby. Seven dragons and a cute little baby dragon. Yeah, which yeah. hiccups flames. Yeah, that's Shrek. That's not Game of Thrones. Oh, they did hit up the flames. Ah, oh, so they did. I forgot about that. Well, the thing they did hit up flames in the second season, and she's playing with them, and they're like, meh, "Oh, meh, I, I don't." Know that. I can't remember. Anyway, well, goddamn, it's almost twelve o'clock at night. Yes. Um, we've really put in a shift tonight. We have. I'm tired. You are tired. I can tell. I need to go to my bed. I am working in eight hours. I have the last meal of minutes. the day and start editing. Hmm. I'm in my twelve-hour fasting period, so it's fine. Oh, are you doing it? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Not a moment. <laughs> One day you'll... you'll I know. You'll I know. do it. You'll do it. If you, if you don't know what we're talking about... Um, um, Go listen to previous podcasts where I get 
bastard. <laughs> that sounds weird. It does actually, doesn't it? Yes, it does. But maybe that's a good hook, so go for it. So next week what we'll be doing, um, obviously episode two of Game of Thrones. So um, come back for that because yep. obviously it's going to be as good as this one, <laughs> as as informative. Might be even we might even be a bit more awake because and a bit more insightful. Yeah, well, I think this one is kind of setting the pace, setting the scene, and we're trying to figure out where they're going with it. So I suppose we get we'll get more insightful as it goes on. Yes, this is true. As more things happen, the more questions will come. We'll get answers. We'll have more questions. Maybe we should come up with some predictions next week and mm. call things. That are going to happen. Well, I just did. I called that Cersei and Jamie are going to die in each other's arms after killing each oh, other. Oh, yeah, 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 you did. You did. Okay. I Brienne's going to, get, yeah. going to have to kill Tormund. Yes. I think I'm going to throw out another one. The Hound's going to have to use the Fire Sword. Yeah, that's a good one. I think he'll have to use it. I want to see I want to see Clegane Bowl. I want to see him take down the mountain. I think he's the only person... I think him taking down the mountain would be justified. And it's a seed from the first one. From way back when, you know. Because the mountain's the one who burnt his face. Yeah. So, so maybe he, he uses the brother. fire sword and he says, How do you like it, you cunt? Ah, exactly. That's exactly what's going to happen. I'm telling you, man. I should I should be writing shows. I should be writing stuff for WWE. I have got ideas, motherfuckers. <laughs> um, so that's three things that's going to happen. And Arya's going to use Ed Sheeran's face. Possibly. Unless it's too expensive. The only reason it won't happen. But she's going to use one of that team's face and it's probably going to be Ed Sheeran just to drop him in a couple of times, you know, randomly, I think. So that's that's four predictions for you right there. There we go. What are some of your predictions, folks? Let us know. Come on, Kev. You've got some ideas about this. Oh, I must do, eh? Absolutely must do. Golly gosh darn, it's time for you to uh, do your sign-off, friend. <sighs> too late. Too late. Too late. He's already signed off. Thanks for listening, guys. You'll get us at the Buff Geek Podcast blog dot wordpress dot com. You'll find me at D Stoby in the usual places. Thanks for listening. And as I said, you'll be able to catch episode two of the Game of Thrones uh, review series next week, or depending when you're listening to this right now. I suppose yes, uh-huh. it'll already, be, Last already week. be available. If you're listening to it in real time or almost real time, which would be Friday the twenty first of the seventh of seventeen. I don't know when people are listening to these things. No, that's God damn. True. Um, you will also be able to look forward to hearing our MCU movie review series roundup where we figure out, we, we basically battle out as to where, even though we've scored them already, we're going to figure out what. Them. We're gonna re- basically, we're going to rescore everything. We're going to rank them. Argue about everything, and then we'll be like, no, that was fucking way better than this, and it's going to get totally messy, and hopefully Steve's going to send us a whole bunch of information to help us out there. <laughs> there. We're going to need it. I'm going to bring dry wipe markers. There's a whiteboard right there. No, that won't come off. So? Great. I've actually got a whiteboard in the... in the, in the. So you do. I've got a whiteboard. Yeah, there we go. Oh, well, we'll use right. the whiteboard then. you got all the tools. We can whiteboard it. Could we Facebook Live it? Would we want to do that? Nah. Is that too much pressure? Possibly. Oh, you pussy. Right, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, Find us on the you. website. Find us anywhere at The Buff Geek on all social media. Hashtag The Buff Geek Podcast. Shall we begin?